All right, here we are um, doing the series Understanding and Obeying the uh, Ten Commandments. This is lesson number six uh, in this series and we're going to be doing commandment number five. Uh, the title of this uh, particular lesson in our small group series is uh, The Command with a Promise. The Command with a Promise. So far we have covered the first four commandments uh, having to do with God's relationship with man and man's uh, need and duty to um, honor God. Uh, these uh, four uh, commandments, uh, to honor God as the only God, uh, to honor God as the highest of beings, uh, to honor God as the Holy One, and uh, to honor God as the Lord of time, the Lord of our time, certainly. The next uh, six commandments, which we will uh, begin with uh, today, uh, address man's relationship to other people, to other individuals uh, in society. These uh, um, commandments number five to 10, uh, honor to others uh, in the form of honoring our parents, honoring fellow man, uh, honoring our spouse, honoring society, honoring our neighbor, and of course, honoring ourselves. And so the first uh, four commandments uh, lead to peace with God and peace with ourselves. And the last six uh, commandments promote peace within society uh, as a whole. So the fifth commandment, which we're going to do in this session, uh, reads, uh, Exodus chapter 12, uh, excuse me, chapter 20, verse 12 reads, uh, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. So there's the fifth commandment. First question, of course, why should we uh, obey this uh, commandment? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, um, the command is right in itself. It is correct in and of itself. Paul, the apostle, says that um, this is the right thing that we ought to do in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, there's a, a natural chain of authority given by God and parents have been given charge over children. You know, I used to say to my own kids, uh, they say, why should we obey you? I said, because God says so. Not only because I say so, because God says so. God is the one who gives that command, not, not man, not mankind. Disobeying, disobeying parents in the Lord, uh, when I say in the Lord, I mean disobeying parents when they're directing us and giving us commands and things to obey which are godly, um, is the same as disobeying the Lord, for He is the one giving the authority to the parents. As a matter of fact, in some countries like Canada, for example, uh, obedience to parents is part of the civil code. So it's part of the civil law, not just the uh, spiritual law. Another reason why we ought to obey this uh, commandment, um, parents deserve our obedience. In most cases, parents will or have done more for us than any teacher we've ever had or mentor or friend. Again, in most cases, even poor parents have done more for us than we will ever be able to repay them in our, in our lifetimes. Uh, we should obey parents uh, from a sense of gratitude, uh, if from nothing else. Uh, thirdly, why obey? A couple of reasons. Um, it is wise to do so. It's wise, it's, it's a wise attitude to have uh, uh, to obey our parents. I mean, they provide wise advice from experience. Uh, they usually want what is best for us, even if it's to their disadvantage. Uh, they have nothing to gain from our unhappiness and usually they want nothing in return um, uh, from, a, from our success. Uh, parents uh, are, are happy when we're happy. They, they have succeeded when, when we succeed. And of course, uh, in life, we need all the help that we can, uh, we can get. If you don't learn obedience from your parents, you'll eventually have to learn it from someone else. It'll be a drill instructor or a superior or a su supervisor, perhaps a policeman or a prison guard. Somebody somewhere along the line will, will forcibly teach you uh, obedience. Uh, also, if you want to succeed in life at something, no matter what it is, music, or art, business, uh, personal relationships, you need to learn to follow someone else's instructions and, and leadership. Parents teach us this important lesson early on in life, and, and usually they're, they're doing it in a, in a sense, uh, in a context of, of love. It's wise to return that love in the form of obedience to our parents. 
Um, you rebels, uh, don't wait till uh, parents are gone to show your respect and your love for them. You know, my own dad died when I was uh, 15 years old, and I tell you right now, and I've, I've said this uh, as long as uh, he's been gone, uh, I'd give a lot to just have one hour uh, with him again. So uh, take advantage of your parents uh, in, in the best possible way uh, while you still have them uh, with you. Well, we know from other passages that the instruction to children about parents also works the other way around as well. Parents also have a responsibility when it comes to this uh, particular command. Uh, so some of the demands of parents. Well, first of all, discipline. In Romans uh, 13 verse 24, Paul says, He who withholds his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him diligently. So parents need to teach children the art of obedience and the art and the ability uh, to have self-control. Very important for them to have that if they are to succeed later on. Uh, secondly, parents um, um, uh, owe their children a, a training, proper training. In Proverbs 22 verse 6, Solomon writes, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Um, how to conduct oneself in a manner that will produce a happy and a productive life. Um, provide children with education and emotional and artistic development and social graces and of course uh, religious instruction. All of this type of training uh, parents uh, are, um, are required to give uh, to their children. Um, another demand of the parent is spiritual guidance that I just mentioned. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, uh, Paul says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, uh, showing children uh, by word and deed how to please God and how to save their own souls. You know, children are not very impressed with what we say or even with what we do. They're impressed if what we say and do consistently match and consistently aim high. Then they're impressed. Uh, they will aim high if we aim high. They will do what we say if we do what we say. Children, you know, they many times they're not, they're not paying attention to what you say. They're paying attention to what you, you do. So you owe them spiritual uh, guidance. You owe them emotional guidance. And, and, and this is something conscious that, you, uh, that parents have to uh, provide for their uh, children. So we've discussed why it's wise to obey, um, but what does it ask of children? You know, we've talked about what does it require of, of adults, of parents? You know, what are they supposed to do? Well, what, is it, what does the command require of children? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Obedience, number one knowing and doing the will of parents without disrespect. I read again, uh, Ephesians 6, 1, children obey your parents in the Lord for it is right. Um, the key is to obey for children, not, not to judge how wise or how capable the parents are, not why should we do this. The thing that they're learning is to obey what their parents uh, are giving them to say and to, uh, to do. And then of course the second demand is honor. Uh, live your life in such a way that who you are and what you do brings honor to your parents and not disgrace or, or shame. Note that the, man, the command doesn't say thou shalt love you know, thy parents. God doesn't demand that we love our parents. He asks us, he commands us to honor our parent. And this we need to do um, uh, to all of our parents, uh, irregardless of, of how they have you know, handled their parenting, uh, their parenting roles. We need to love everyone, of course. We, we need to even love our enemies. Our parents, however, we need, to, we need to honor. It's not always possible to love our parents because of what they may have done or what they may have neglected to, to do. But it is necessary that we honor them. This is always in our control. Um, uh, honoring our parents is always something that we can do. It's not based on who they are and who they, you know, who they were or how they did their parenting job. It's based on who we are. We're demonstrating honor to our parents. We're demonstrating the type of person that we are when we do that. 
Okay, uh, some of the things that the fifth commandment does not allow. Again, uh, there are lessons about parenting connected to this commandment taught elsewhere about what parents cannot do and can't use this commandment as a cover for doing the following things. One of these is tyranny, for example. Parents who see themselves as dictators or kings, uh, unapproachable, never wrong, never teachable. Uh, kids are not perfect and it's unreasonable for, uh, for parents to expect them to be perfect. Again, in uh, Ephesians chapter six, verse four, Paul says, fathers do not provoke your children to anger. Uh, children need forgiveness. They need uh, parents who are flexible. And, and, and also there needs to be the possibility that sometimes parents are wrong and parents are willing to admit to their children that they are wrong or they, they have failings. Another thing that this command prohibits, uh, abuse whether it be verbal or emotional or physical or sexual abuse, all of these are wrong. Sometimes you know, parents um, uh, uh, use punishment or manipulation or intimacy, and they use these things in an ungodly way. Uh, punishment, manipulation, or intimate contact that stimulates or gratifies us is abuse, and abuse is unholy. It is the unholy use of our, of our authority um, given to us by God. Another thing that the fifth commandment uh, prohibits, uh, corruption. Uh, teaching or encouraging children to adopt habits or a lifestyle which is immoral or ungodly. Again, I read from Ephesians 6 verse 4, Paul says, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Most parents who corrupt their children um, most of the time do so by default. For example, they don't correct their own immoral habits and attitudes and thus they pass these on uh, to their children. Um, most alcoholics, for example, uh, took their first drink out of their own parents' uh, liquor uh, cabinet. Uh, most children uh, consume their first pornography when they stumble across their father's uh, hidden magazines. Uh, my first cigarette smoke uh, was stolen uh, from my parents' uh, cigarette pack laying around the house. I, I was 12 at the time. Uh, I was 30 when I finally uh, quit. Thankfully, my mom, she finally quit when she was 60. But, but that bad habit that I picked up and that I had for years and years, I picked up in my own home from my own parents. Children will be influenced by evil in this world. Hopefully, it shouldn't be their parents' evil. It should be evil, well, it shouldn't be, but I'm saying, you know, hopefully, if it's evil, it'll be evil that's outside the home, not evil that's inside the home. Paul, the apostle, says that this command is the first one with a promise. The promise works for both parents and for children. For children who obey their parents, they open themselves up to a better life here on earth because of the lessons they learn from their parents. And parents receive the satisfaction that comes from seeing children who are fulfilled and less subject to the pitfalls and hurts of this world. For Christian parents and children, there is the joy of knowing that obedience to parents leads to the ability to obey God and receive the eternal blessings as a result. Well, there's our uh, lesson on this uh, particular command. Um, I'm going to give you some questions now for your small group uh, discussion. Question number one. Is there a way in which you feel that you have dishonored your parents? Question number two. If you could, what would you do or say to them about that situation? Question number three. Is being a parent harder today than when you were a kid? If yes, why and how? Question number four. Why do you think that some children turn out bad even with good parenting? Question number five. What is the quality you like best about your mother or father as a parent, as a Christian parent?